Hi guys. To really optimize your lighting setup in your grow room, it is essential that you can measure power and understand where the hot spots are, where the weak spots are, and ultimately optimize your grow light for your space in terms of hanging height. The problem is that uh, sensors such as this one, Apogee SQ500 for measuring power, are in the region of about four or five hundred dollars uh, or euros. Uh, so a bit out of the reach for most home growers. So what I've done is I've compared in different increments. So I measured with this quantum sensor at uh, 150, 300, 450, 600, 750, 900 and 1050 par. I measured um, the corresponding lux readings with these uh, four lux meters available on Amazon. And these range in like $20 to $40, I think $45 in, in price. And I compared the two together. And then I used a, uh, a Sensitec spectral radiometer to compare the par reading and the lux reading. And I graphed them all so that you can use these meters to read the light intensity in lux and then multiply by a number to get the corresponding power value. Now I've only done this for two spectrum, so two light colors. Uh, for regular white LED, three and a half thousand K color temperature, that's this guy here. So you're pretty much your, your bog standard white LED. And then for a mid-color temperature, again, 3.5K white LED mix with mixed-in reds. Often uh, manufacturers, including ourselves, add these um, red diodes because they're higher power efficiency than the whites, and they bring the system efficiency all the way up. However, they do cause this little red spike, or this little spike in the red on the spectrum. And I checked both of these to ensure that uh, we had accurate, and they were slightly different in each case. I haven't done HID, I haven't done all the variances of HPS, and metal halide, and CMH, and blurple LEDs. Um, so apologies for that, I'm not gonna do those, and just doing the modern LEDs. Um, so yeah, let's, get, let's have a look at the figures. So the first one is for white LEDs. And you can see the long straight graph there of the quantum sensor measuring the power versus lux reading. That's the blue line. And we've got four corresponding lines for the four different sensors, all of which proportionately increased pretty much the same rate. The one which probably stands out as being closest um, <clears throat> not necessarily most accurate, but closest and easier to convert is the uni T. Um, but we've got factors there for all four of the um, quantum sensor, sorry, um, lux meters that I've, um, I've tested. Next, I, ch I uh, did the same for a white plus red LED. And again, you can see a close correspondence with the uni T. However, they were all pretty consistent and they all um, were consistent up along the range in terms of applying the factors. So you could use any one of these. So the data sheets for these lux meters are in the, at the end of this video and in the description below. Um, and yeah, I'm going to do a further video shortly, which will show you how to use these meters to measure out, or to, sorry, to record, measure and record the power intensity on your, on your plant canopy, and then how to optimize that. So doing it at different um, light heights, different lighting arrangements, taking the average, looking for hot spots, cool spots, and the maximum average intensity you can get from your lighting system. So if you wanna watch that, uh, please subscribe and stay tuned. If you have any questions or queries about any of this stuff with the lux meters, please leave it in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you all as soon as possible. Thank you.